In today's episode, you'll see how a simple noise complaint ended with the discovery of an intruder living in the walls of another person's home. Jason! Jason! Jason. <laughs> water! Jason, the water's ah! Jason, you're under arrest! Then, how police officers found a thief trapped 20 feet above the ground. You're under arrest. For what? For trespassing for one. I was running from someone, bro. A disturbed man chasing police officers through his own house like in a horror movie. Who is it? Oh, oh, oh. Hey, you in my house? Get out of my house! This is so hot! Lucas, I'm stuck in the bathroom. But first, you'll see how an ordinary traffic stop turned into a record drug bust. In Louisiana, a state trooper noticed and stopped a truck that had tinted windows. He told the driver he would get a minor penalty, but when he started questioning him about his route and activity log, things became very suspicious and strange. Hey, good morning! Is your door open? Is your door open? You have a driver's license with you. You owner operator or you work for somebody? Okay, what's the first name of that person? First name of that person. Holy s Say it again. P. Pedro. Sarante. I don't, I don't need the last name, just the first okay. name, that's all. Are you currently loaded? No, I'm okay, empty. Okay, empty. Where are you running from? I'm running from Texas. What part? Um, that Orange, Texas. Orange? Yeah. Where are you headed to next? Um, New York. Back to New York? Yeah. Where, what part of New York? New York New York or Bronx, Yonkers? Bronx. Bronx? Yeah. It's a long way empty, huh? Not good loads. No good loads? No, but I'm probably going to stop, like, probably Tennessee, probably about See if you can get in a load yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. When's the last time you got inspected, sir? It's been a long time. Been a little bit? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Is the registration for the trailer, is it in here? Is it yeah, it should be here. Should be here? All right, you running ELD? Sure, so uh, I mean, it's up to you. I'm going to hold on to your registration. I'll bring it back to you when I'm done. No, um, I did the paper lock. Okay. Due to the fact they stole my tablet. They stole your tablet? How'd they look, get it? Look. They broke this? Yeah, they broke it. Why the hell would they steal the tablet? I don't know. I think of, all the the steal, like of all the things they steal? Of all the things they would steal? You got so, the police report with you? No, no, no. Okay, how come you didn't fill out your date for the day? Date. Man. Date. Oh, I forgot to put it on. Yeah. Since I'm not used to do, doing the logbook like that. Mm -hmm. So. It, I, like, I've never it. been pulled over. That's the thing. Right? Never ever. No, never no, been no. roadside inspected, nothing. No, no. How no. long have you been trucking? I've been like for about five years. This is the reason why. It's because I saw the tin on your windows. That is a violation, okay? Is it single driver or you got somebody back here? No, no, no. I got my friend back. Right. He's sleeping. Oh, okay. So y'all tag team drive or just No, you? no, no. Just me. Who is that? He's the owner. He's the owner of the truck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. What did y'all take down that way? Excuse me? What did cargo did you bring down that way? Down to Texas? Melvin doesn't know what he was transporting, so he asks his boss, Pedro, who also doesn't know what they were transporting. <laughs> He's still sleeping. Hey, let him sleep. Let him sleep, man. Don't don't mess with him. So were you with him when you came down? Huh? Yo, were you drove? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Do you remember that last load? Not really. So I gotta take out the tents. Say it again. I gotta take out the tent. Tent, yeah. Um, yeah, Melvin is definitely hiding something. Neither he nor the owner know what they were previously transporting. Now they're crossing a distance of 1,500 miles with no cargo. The officer will later find out that the trailer was rented. The ELD, which automatically records all vehicle activity, was supposedly stolen, but Melvin didn't report it to the police. He's manually logging the information, but it's incomplete. It seems that Melvin has just become a suspect, so the police officer will now thoroughly go through his logbook where he'll find many irregularities and pressure Melvin even harder with questions. How long have you been with this guy? Well, okay, now as in you just got hired today? No, no, no. So what is now? Stand right there for me. Huh? About a month? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Who'd you work for before? Like before I used to work for myself, but my business went down. Okay. You've been with them for a month, you said, mm -hmm. right? And you've been driving over the road for about five years, you said? Yes, yes. And before that, you were in local, right? Trucks, I was local. travel I was trucks, local. I was local. local, local. All right. All right. So, yes. This is your logbook, correct? Yeah. This is your signature and everything. Yes. When did your ELD get stolen from you? Before this. Before this. Okay. What day? I don't know exactly. Because I wasn't here. Okay. So how do you know it got stolen? He told me. About it. Oh, so he told you about it. Yeah. So it's possible it that was parked. it was parked. Okay. Well, we'll have to go and talk to him about that. Okay. Um, when you came down this way from New Jersey down this way, all right? What day was that? Do you remember? It was right here. Okay. So you're in the Bronx here. Yeah. Okay. What were y'all hauling? Do you remember? No, no. Okay. This is part of the reason why you need to write shipping papers and stuff down there. Okay. Also, you, I'm new to this. I'm sorry, man. You've been running trucks for five years. Now, I want you to look at something. Hmm? I want you to look at something right quick. Yeah. You stopped in Pearl River. Pearl River, Louisiana. Stayed there overnight. Mm -hmm. Did your pre-trip in Pearl River, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. It only took you hmm, one, two, three hours to get to Orange, Texas. Yeah. No. Try again. So either A, you got a false log, or B, I don't know what else B can be, but something else is going on. You don't know what you brought down. You don't know the cargo. Do you remember dropping off well, yeah. in Orange, Texas? Yeah. Okay. Where did you go to drop off at? Was it a store? Was it a distribution center? Was it? Okay. For who? Walmart, FedEx. No. You don't know the product that you dropped no, off. No. Okay. Your logbook, babe. What I'm trying to understand is, was it an error of just a mistake, or was it an error? because you've been fudging your logbook the whole time. The data in the logbook are full of nonsense and Melvin is making excuses that it's because he's inexperienced with the logbook, even though he claims to have been driving trucks for five years. The cop realizes he's lying, so now he will also question the supposed owner of the truck, who won't say much because he doesn't speak English. Hey Pedro, Pedro, hey man, wake up. I need to ask some questions because he don't know everything. What did y'all haul from New York down to Orange, Texas? What did you bring from Bronx, from Bronx. New York, to Orange, Texas? Oh, the Orange, Texas. They said I gotta check the load. You know what I mean? The broker says, "Oh, I'm gonna check the load." Well, because well, no, 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 no. From Bronx, yeah. did you bring a load to Orange, Texas? To Orange, Texas. Did yeah. you bring one? Orange, Texas. Did you drop one off? I'm sorry. Okay, you understand me pretty good. So did you bring a load to Texas? Yes, on Texas all the... Do you have a bill? Do you have a ship of paper when you brought it down? Uh, I go to the... To the uh, sell the truck stuff for the... Uh, that is, Spanish right there. Okay, what was the cargo? Where's the device? The guy you took it out. He took it out? No. Who? I don't know because... It was stolen? Huh? It was stolen? Stolen? Yes. Stolen? Yes. Okay. The duo is totally lost as if they've just woken up in someone else's truck. Reinforcements have arrived and now the cops have no choice but to inspect the vehicle of the suspicious owner. During the search, one officer will find 75 kilos of high quality cocaine in the cabin, which weren't even hidden. This is consent to search. Do you have any drugs in the in the truck? Uh, uh, like contraband drugs? Explain that to him. Oh, I don't want to me on the No, nothing like that. We're doing this because of the inconsistencies. Came all the way from New York down to Texas, right? You, he doesn't, he can't tell me what the load is. You told the other guys possibly meat? 
possibly. Yeah. I mean. Okay. What's up, Malabaño? The bathroom. He says, so, um, thanks for bathroom. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bathroom? That's what, what he said. Okay. Oh, no. so, so you thought it was meat, but it was actually some sort of product for bathroom. We're going to go look through the, con through the contents of the truck and everything like that. Right. You got okay. a key for Do you have lock? a key for the lock? Key? I got it. This is the key. What the key's yeah. not working. No bueno. Can I cut it? Just look okay. up. Oh. The trailer was empty, but in the sleeping area, they found a huge amount of narcotics stuffed in three duffel bags. Put your hands behind your back, my man. Oh, what are we going to do with this? Dude? Duffel bags. Duffel bags of kilos. You're lying. Come on. Bricks. 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 Hold on. I'm Let me go get the other. Let me go get the other bag. Um, what's going on, there? Dude, these might be from a gas tank. They smell diesel. And now the scariest encounter you will ever see. The police went to an address to perform a welfare check because a concerned neighbor reported hearing a man constantly screaming. Upon arrival, they were greeted by open doors and an apparently empty house, but in their wildest dreams they couldn't have known that in fact, an enraged armed man was lurking for them. Jackson Police Department! I hear like a male screaming, huh? but I can't tell if it's coming from around back or up here, but just be aware there's some staircases right there. So, you ready? <laughs> Jackson Police Department! Jackson Police Department! Is anybody in here? Police department! Go ahead and start the counting. Go ahead and start the counting. Fire, 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 fire,
Dude, I see! Dude, I see! Lucas, where you at? So put your gun on the police department! Police department! Police department! Put your gun down! Put your gun down! After this chaos, a SWAT team was called and the attacker refused to leave the house for 16 hours. The officers didn't get shot but were injured during withdrawal. The attacker was charged with two counts of aggravated assault against a law enforcement officer and one count of possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. Downstairs in the basement? I'm not sure. It's like down, there's like voices. Okay. I did not. Uh, did you guys get a? We got a call from a neighbor. We're just gonna. I'm gonna hang tight until I get a partner here. Okay. You guys just want to hang tight outside here? Yeah, I'm gonna get my shoes on. So. Seventy nine. I have contact with another neighbor who's hearing the same thing. Just describe to me when you go down this and the door opens. Uh -huh. There's a room. And he's not in there, he's behind something. It's behind, like, I swear to God, there's like a hole, I've never seen it before. He's like crying to himself. Oh, right, can we go down there? After. Yeah. Okay, we'll have you guys stay up here. Okay. We don't know what's going on, so we're just gonna have a shield. Oh, Who's, whose apartment is like right here on this first floor? That's yours? Okay. And from there, it sounds like he's right underneath my floorboard. Okay, so it sounds below. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like down, like, down below. Right? Yeah, like okay. in this corner right here. I yeah. think this is the corner of that, because my bed is like right off, maybe not this corner, but like... It sounds yeah, like, so it sounds like we can hear him right, right there. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where he is. Okay. They said when we go down to this room, it's a room, and they said there's like a plywood wall that's put up, and there's like next to a fire extinguisher. They said it sounds like he's behind the wall. Yeah. But we could hear him yelling. The police received a call that an unknown man had entered someone else's property. The owner managed to chase him away, but then he entered the basement of the neighboring house and disappeared. While waiting for the police, the neighbors heard screams and swearing from the man, who was later identified as Jason, known for such bizarre entries on other people's properties before. This time he squeezed between the walls in the basement, got stuck there, and couldn't get out. Cross Police Department! There's a crawl space up here. Let's clear this door first. We're cross Police Department, can you hear us? Police Department. We know you're in there, can you hear us? Clear. It's clear. Stay. Stay. Speak. 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 Cross please with canine. We Come out with your hands up now. Hey man, we know you're in there. Can you hear me? Hey man, we know you're in there. We heard you. Can you just talk to us? Can you hear me? Are you able to crawl out? All right, could you do that for me? Because we don't have the, we don't want to have the fire department come over and start cutting holes in the floor to get you out. We're not going anywhere. Just okay. You're stuck. What's your name? Jason Rankin. Jeremy Rankin. Jeremy. Jeremy. Is it Jason or Jeremy? Unfortunately, we might have to cut some floorboards because he says he's stuck and he can't get out. I need you to go to this next one and keep working your way this way. Do you understand? To your right. I need to see you. Where are you? I'm right here. You see me? Uh-huh. Maybe you can get out through here. No. You can crawl the way to the house. Get pretty tight. Get through. Ah! Whoa! Good. You good? You 
good? Jason, come on, we gotta get you out of there. Jason! Jason! This was the moment after which the real drama began. Jason refused to come out for hours, and the police officers followed him the entire time with the help of a robot. They tried to drive him out with a dog, but Jason kept kicking, so they had to give up. They sprayed him with pepper spray, but without success. Jason then became enraged and grabbed a metal rod, ready to attack the first person who touched him. In the end, everyone put on gas masks and tear gas was released. Cross police with the canine. Good boy, watch him. Watch that guy. Good boy. Down. Uh-uh. Get him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Don't kick the dog. Do not kick the dog. Come on. So he started kicking at him. Are you out yet? Oh, no. Nope. Still, uh, still being a little stubborn. All right. So you got two options, man. You come out and I give you this bottle of water, or I'm going to spray pepper spray up there and you can come out that way. Come out so J we don't have to spray this down here. Jason, this is your last warning before I give you pepper spray, okay? I do not have to send any more in there if you crawl out. Jason, once you're out in the fresh air and we get some water to you, you're going to feel a lot better. <laughs> Jason, come on. Jason, do you need help getting out? No, I want you to come on in. We're not coming in. Come in. I'm a, the only thing that's going to come in is pepper spray if you don't come out. Jason, will you crawl out to the sound of my voice? All right, here it comes. <coughs> Jason, I'm going to toss you a bottle of water. Jason, listen to me. You ready? Jason, gas is coming. Just so you know. Put the pipe down. Jason, you're under arrest. Come on towards me. Put that pipe Step down. Back. Step back now. Where's the angle? He's got nowhere to go. Where'd he go? <laughs> Step back. Jason, come on, buddy. Come towards me. Let's go get some fresh air. You're under arrest. Come on towards me. Jason was taken to the hospital, but he soon escaped, prompting the police to chase after him. Hey, Jason. Jason. Hey, buddy. 55. He's going back towards Jackson. He's running. Jason, stop. It's the police. Knock it off. Jason, you're not free to leave. Stop. Jason, stop. Jason, you're under arrest. I am stop. Jason, stop. Get off of me. I haven't done anything! We're good. Ow, ow! Okay, Jason, we're gonna roll you up on your butt here, okay? Once you roll towards me, okay? Ow! Do you need medical attention? 
One, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. And now something you have to see to believe. The police arrived at a junkyard because the employees reported catching a thief attempting to steal catalytic converters. What they didn't mention was that they had trapped the thief with a forklift in a car 20 feet above the ground. Take this backpack off, all right? Watch your hands, watch your hands, watch your hands. Yeah, relax, bro. What's your name, bro? My name is Mr. Funk, bro. Okay, hey, what's your first name? Um, I, none of your business, bro. Well, it is, because you're under arrest. Bro. You're under arrest. For, for what? Go, for trespassing, for one. And I was running from someone, bro. You were? Yes, I was, okay. sir. I don't have an ID, bro. So what's your real name? My name is Mr. Funk, bro. What's your uh, first name? I'm, I, uh, what's a lie? I don't know. What are you talking about? My name is Mr. Funk, bro. That's not a f***ing lie, sir. Yeah, so and don't like, call me a liar, bro. Relax, relax, I'm, I am relaxed, bro. Right. So when, when you're... Uh, yeah, so when I'm what, bro? A, I'm literally yeah, running from someone, bro. He, he, you don't he's, know he's, me, bro. You see the what the I'm going through? Let's walk back here. You're going to arrest me for not... I don't know what I don't have anything on me that's gonna hurt you. Because I don't have a gun, fucking taser, like y'all! Alright, cool. I'm not chilling out, I'm cold and running from someone, bro. Alright, man, well, here's the deal. This lot has been, uh, there's had a serious amount of break ins and converters cut off, and you got a sawzall, and you're in the private area of the business that's not open to the public. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know what I mean? Right. I, th I mean, I, I, you haven't obviously, to our knowledge, cut off a converter, even though that one's dangling right there. I, I don't, I don't, I don't cut converters or anything. Like never that. done, well, never they, cut they a converter. Have, they have knowledge of chasing all the property. Never so. once, never once have I ever cut a converter ever. So what do you got the saws off for, brother? Uh, copper. To be honest, brother, I'm not gonna lie. Were you trying to get some copper back here? No, I was not. I was not, sir. Don't ask this guy. He'll sell us in forty What uh, what were you doing back here? I was. Going down the Freedom Trail and I was running from someone and have been for a couple days now. It kind of invaded. Have you been? Have they? You've had encounters with the employees here before? They told you you can't be here. Uh, I've I've had one chase off before from here. Well, yes, you, not gonna lie. When was that? Last year. My last what happened? Year. What happened during that? What did they catch you doing? I was sleeping. Same thing. Nothing different. Like I literally haven't stole anything like that. Who's <laughs> uh? Is this your car? Yeah. All right. Well, let's figure out what they're if they're gonna want to press charges. All right, man. But just going forward, when the cops ask you your name in these situations, it's not an option, Mr. Funk. <laughs> Rude awakening. Oh, I'm getting lifted the in here. Yeah. When he called me on the radio, come down with the load. I mean, I scooped under this, one. just instantly and <laughs> raised him up. That's why we're all here. So the, the car was bouncing up like this. I went from that back corner down there mm -hmm. all the way up this aisle, which is our roughest aisle out of all three of them. Yeah. This car's bouncing. Get they ready to flip off the four zero suspension on that. I'm just gonna walk to this door over here, okay? No you ever been here before? Yes or no? I just need to get out of here, bro. Please don't bug me, man. I don't want to be put, bro. I don't want to be here, bro. I don't want to be put, man. Please, man. Seriously, what the man do? Get through the process. You'll go to court in the morning. No, I don't want to go to court. I have to get out now. If you have somebody to bond you out, I don't have anyone here. Listen, listen. Worst case scenario, you have to sleep here tonight and you go to court in the morning. I don't sleep as it is, bro. That's fine. You can stay awake and watch TV. Right I can't watch TV. Listen, I'm just telling you. I mean, get through this and you will get out, okay? 
So, he broke into a car at the uh, junkyard, and before he could get out, he's done it before, they got like the forklift, and they had him, I'm not kidding, like 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> And now you'll witness a conflict between a police sergeant and a police chief. Several officers were on the scene of a traffic accident, including Sergeant William Major. Suddenly, Police Chief Leonard Guida appeared at the scene in a drunken state and started to criticize the sergeant for his jacket. Sergeant Major got irritated because this wasn't the first time the chief was drunk at job, and things quickly went downhill when the chief touched the sergeant. What is it? Why do you get a, a jacket on that, that stuff fit to be worn? What's on the back of it? What do you mean? Look at it, tell me what's on the back of it. Oh, uh, they washed off. Yeah, then get rid of it. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. You're a sergeant for God. Okay, Chief. Let me work this DWI, okay? Chief, I'm on a DWI. Over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Get over here. I'm on a DWI. Chief, I'm working. I don't have time to argue about a jacket, okay? Don't touch me. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. You had a problem? You grabbed me! Now get out of here! Before you get a problem. Take him. Take him. No, you're gonna go in. Drunk again. Whose keys are these? They're mine. Get out of here. No. Chief, get out of here or you're gonna get locked up. Chief, you're gonna get locked up. You're grabbing me. I asked you three times come to leave me alone. Here. You're come obstructing here. my DWI. Billy, really, really, come over here. Right, let me go. That's the first thing. Put, put, I'm, Billy, I'm trying Billy, to get away from everybody. Up. Shut up, because you're in trouble now. Stop. No, I'm Please, not in stop. trouble. Stop, I'm not stop, trouble. stop. You're gonna be Stop, trouble. stop, you're Billy. 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 Chief, I'm working on DWI. Listening I'm listening to you. Okay. Shut up. No. You're in trouble because this is the first thing. First first of all, I was about to say to you, you stupid. I was about to say to you, what do you need OEM for? You're, that's, you're embarrassing me in front of the men no, about the jacket. No, 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 no. That's, that's neither here nor there. Okay. That, that's neither here nor there. Now we got a real problem, Billy. Yeah, we do. I know. I we know. do. All right, you're going to have to go inside. No, how about we do no, this? No, 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 no. we go Billy, inside? Billy, you're going to have to go inside right now with me. You're going to have to go inside and... and we're in a serious be... collision. Billy, you're not doing anything when I'm on the scene, okay? You should know better than this, my friend. No. Listen you to me. grab me. No, Billy. I'm Billy. not going to argue with it. I have a uh, crash Billy, to work. Billy, I have a job Billy, to do. you're okay? relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Okay. You're relieved. Okay. No, 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 no. Billy, you have to understand something. You're relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Go in the headquarters and wait for me. Yes, I'm a crash. No, no, Billy. You're relieved. I have Billy. officers here. Billy. Right here. They Billy. could get waffled because my car is Billy. blocking it. Billy, you're relieved. No, Chief. No, Billy. Please, Billy. Don't. You're suspended, Billy. I'm you're suspended? suspended? Yes. Okay. Then I, I'm yeah. suspended. I'm going home. Yes. Billy, come here. I'm going home. You're going, I, no, we you, can't talk. No, no. I'm suspended. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm suspended. I'm you're going, going to home. And you're going to wait for me there. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna suspended. Go you're gonna go I'm going home. Headquarters. You're going to go in the headquarters. You're going to wait for me there. Well, let me work my crash. No, no, no. This no, is why no, I'm here. Billy, you're suspended. All right, if I'm suspended, then I'm not going to wait inside. Nothing no, more. No, 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 Billy. You have to. You have to <sighs> make it. Thank you. Billy, you're suspended. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Wait for me in there. That's an order. See what happened there? Yes, Chief. What, did, what happened? There's some type of exchange between you and Sergeant Major. Well, we're going to talk about that later. Sergeant Major was reinstated and Police Chief Guida was placed on administrative leave pending an investigation into the incident.
Now we go to Ohio, where someone left a bullet in the middle of the school cafeteria. The school was immediately put on lockdown, and the police were called to search all the students. But then one student stepped forward and began to explain how he has the right to bring a weapon to school. Yeah, just go ahead and line up on this hallway right here. It's about a bullet you found on the right? Oh, okay. Something, somebody find something? You know about it? Because I had a bullet in my pocket, but it wasn't like, it's not like I'm planning anything. Oh, okay. I dropped Wait, it so you, you, okay. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this while I got you right here. And just be honest with me. You didn't bring any gun to school, did you? No. Hey, can you put that Gatorade down real quick? Of course. All right, just turn around, face over here real quick. Put your hand on that table for me. Oh, I got more bullets. I got two. Okay, don't put your hand in your pocket. Just keep your hands on the table. Just put them on the table. table. Just put them on the table for me real quick, okay? So I'm going to have to search you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that'd be nice. So you had two bullets in this one? These are yours? Right here. Okay, we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. Literally, if I thought I was doing anything wrong, I wouldn't bring I, I got you. I just carry a rifle around because it's, like, comfortable. And it's not illegal. Well, not, of course. Like, I don't carry it all the time. But I just literally carried it in my car. Like, I don't bring it in school. Is there a gun in your car right now? Yeah. It's right here. Here's a damn rifle. Yeah, just just leave it right there for now. Yeah. It's basically like a, just a 22 rifle, right? Like something yeah. you shoot rabbits with. Rabbit or a squirrel. squirrel. Yeah. I I think you have to. Let's see what. Oh, okay. So there's. I'm gonna put the two bullets he gave us out of his pocket in here, and then the, I have one. I'm gonna put in my other glove. And then that will be the one that we found. Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. If you do that, I'll do the report. I'll, you know. The 22 caliber rifle is often used for recreational shooting, small game hunting, and shooting practice because of its low recoil and cheap maintenance. Even though it's less powerful than most other rifles, it's still a weapon that can be used to kill. The suspect named Nolan led the police to his vehicle where they found the mentioned weapon. He immediately agreed to cooperate, but now you will hear his shocking explanation for deciding to bring the weapon to school. Well, I don't bring it because they're school shooters. I, I carry it around with me because it's, well, it's extra safety caution. I know that if I have it, I don't have to worry about being attacked or anything like that. Okay. All right. This is the only reason I carry it around. It's just, I'm not a big guy. I'm like really small. So I, like if someone's really big, I'm going to run away. I'm not going to try to fight them. But then if someone's like actually trying to hurt me, I know I need some sort of weapon because I'm like really small. Um, do you have anxiety or anything? Yeah, I have, like well, that? I don't have like anxiety, but... I get anxious about like uh, being uh, getting into like physical altercations and stuff like that. So nothing clinical, just no, no. I just get really anxious because there's a lot of fights, out like energy and stuff. But well, that doesn't really matter because I can't bring the gun in like to help me fight them. And I don't like I don't bring the rifle because I'm like assuming I'm gonna have to use it. I just bring it because first of all it looks cool, and second of all it's like the comfort thing. But I know I'm I know it's like a, are you a senior in the modern age? This is bad. Are you a senior? Uh, yeah, no, junior. Junior, okay. How old are you? Um, 17. Gotcha. 13, sorry. But, like, no one, like, no one in the school is like, oh, that's the school threat. Like, no one's ever scared of me shooting off the school or anything like that. Like, no one ever talks about me like that in any sense. So there's no, like, and I have friends at the school, so it's not like, you know what I mean? I'm not like one of those kids. I just see a lot of videos where having the gun prevents, like, altercations, or, or they, if they didn't have the gun, it would be... Like, online videos yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, a different outcome and stuff, like... There's one guy who was like 200 pounds mm -hmm. bigger than this guy and he comes up to his car and he's like, I want to fight you. It looks like he's about to rip him out of his car and the guy just pulls out a gun and the guy turns around and walks the other way and it's like, that's all it is. The situation's over. Just because he didn't even like do anything just because he saw the gun. Nolan claims he had no evil intent and that the weapon serves as a comfort to him because, as he says, he is of smaller stature. He believes he has the right to have a weapon by his side and doesn't understand the danger a weapon poses in a school environment. Now he will talk with the police and school staff where he will try to convince them that he hasn't broken any laws. Try have checked the school's policies before bringing the gun. See, like, try to look through all the policies to make sure that I was allowed to bring it. I just thought, I thought I was allowed to bring a rifle in the parking lot. Okay. So that's like where I'm coming from, alright? I'm just saying. Okay. When you say this kid brought a gun to school, in this modern age, it sounds like 
my only intentions were to shoot up the school. My intentions weren't to shoot up the school. My intentions were to use it as a thing for a comfort thing, a thing to like calm me down a little bit, and kind of like a sentimental thing a little bit. Well, I, the the problem wasn't bringing the gun. The problem was I dropped the bullet in the hallway. That was the problem. I was just like kind of attached to the idea of defending myself. It's kind of why I carried it around. With it. But there's no. Nobody's making any kind of threats or anything. I mean, there's not something that I don't know that. Um, well, every day you never know what's going to happen. Well, I get that. That's why I'm here with a gun. <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. There's no law against bringing a gun, it's a policy. There's no, like, show me the statue. There's no statue. I, I told you before, I assure you, there is an actual law. We'll show it to you when we get to the station. I mean, it's not, we're not making it up. We're, we're trying to... I think you are making it no, up. No, we're trying to accommodate I'll you... I'll do you a favor. ...in a good way. ...for you right now. But it's, you said safety zone. So how am I supposed to know this is a safety zone? A safety zone is any school property and or school <laughs> bus stop. Does it say safety zone is and or school property? School. I don't think it does. It's yeah, school it does. safety zone. School safety zone is defined as any school Wait, property. Illegal conveyance or possession of deadly weapon. This is a serious matter, okay? If we thought that there was an inkling that we were wrong, if there was any gray area, we would, wouldn't do it. We wouldn't do it. We respect your rights, okay? As a person. Stand up. Put your hands behind your back. I said I can Put wait your hands behind your back. I'm telling you, I respect it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stand by. You're safe with us, okay? Everything is going to be okay. We'll explain everything. Why would I not be safe? I'm. Why would I not be safe? You are safe. Yeah, but why would I not be safe? I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. But by saying you're safe with us, that means you're assuming I'm not safe. No, I just want you to have the understanding of where we're coming from. I know where you're coming from. Okay. Just to make it clear, the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990 makes it illegal to knowingly possess a firearm in a school zone which is defined as in or on the grounds of a public, parochial, or private school, or within a distance of 1,000 feet from the grounds of the school. It is a critical piece of legislation aimed at reducing gun violence in and around schools. So bringing a weapon to school that day was very illegal. Take a breath. You're just arresting me on a charge that's made up. I know. It's not you are, though. It's, not it's made it's up. Been, it's been in it's made up. For a long oh, time. it's made you up, dude. Make up things. It's we made don't up. We have the authority to make things up. I'll go ahead and sit in here and butt first. It's kind of cool in here, actually. It's all right. I just, like, I have no listen. idea. The rifle was like a big deal. Okay, okay, okay. It's a 22 caliber. Listen, listen, it's not listen, like. Listen. It's Assault no, rifle. It's not, a, it's not a, like a made for killing. It's made for shooting small game. I understand. You'll have an opportunity to explain your version of why this played out or how this happened. Okay, you'll have that. Maybe right now to each of us is not the opportunity. Take a breath a minute. Try, try to relax a minute. we got to move forward, okay? Do you get what I'm saying? You'll have an opportunity to explain it. Everyone with a gun is not a bad person. I'm just saying. Just because I have a gun doesn't mean I'm a criminal. I understand that. Nolan was arrested and charged with possession of a deadly weapon in a school safety zone and inducing panic. And finally, meet Mad Max from Carter County. A police officer pulled over a speeding driver but found the local sheriff behind the wheel. To make matters worse, he is a known repeat offender with a long history of speeding. <laughs> Afternoon. Oh, come on. What's up, Bryce? God, I'm so sick of this. I know. You need to ride when are you going to stop speeding? I'm just speeding. I'm 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 I am. I am. <laughs> I'm not going to write you a ticket, but I am going to go to the deal. chief tomorrow. That's fine. Go to the chief. Because obviously you do not respect Bryce, my job and what I do. Because Bryce, I've stopped you about twice a month for the last six months. Oh, and I'm asking you to stop me. You haven't stopped me twice a month for the last six months. And how many times have I stopped you, Chris? You stopped me three times. How and, and, and how often? How in about six, six months period? Three times. Okay, I'll go back and pull the records. That's fine. That's fine. Do you, 
do you think that you can just drive and do what you want? No, I don't think that. I am headed somewhere. I'm headed up to the office. 70 and a 55. You're right. I was speeding. With your daughter in the car. You're exactly right. You don't have to lecture me. I know that. So I'm no better than anybody else, so write me a ticket. Don't lecture me. Write me a ticket if you're going to write me a ticket, man. I'm not being so you're respectful. not going to stop speeding? Is that what no, it's going to take? I didn't say that. What's it, what's it going to take for you to stop speeding? I will slow down. This is the deal. What's it going to take? That's what yes. I need to know. This is the deal. Because you that's the only options I have. As a law enforcement officer, as a patrol officer, mm -hmm. the only options we have is we either, I've stopped you th at least three times in the last few months. How many times have I stopped you? Uh, for speeding. Less, less than... About six times. Less than, probably about six. Okay, and most people, Six most people, I write tickets. For, I write tickets about three times. I agree. And the last conversation you and I had, I asked you. I said, "What's it going to take for you to stop driving fast?" And you said, "You're right. I need to stop." I do. But you don't. You don't respect my job. No, 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 no. no. You don't I respect. Don't need to start then, then, then why do you continue to do it? Then why do you continue to do it? I've got 65 employees that I respect their jobs, and I respect every single person that wears that badge. Then why but do you continue that. to do it? Don't start that. Don't start that with me. You because just don't you care know. then? No. Do don't you, even start. This you, is the deal, man. You, tell I me. Just you, tell me so I'll know you where you know stand. exactly. I stand behind the badge. I was speeding. This is ridiculous. Now let me tell you what's ridiculous. This video was released at the beginning of 2024, but in 2021, Sheriff Bryant was already the star of a body cam recording. Back then, an officer stopped him for speeding as well, and the sheriff refused to cooperate, demanding to be allowed to go on, stating that he was a police officer too. He briefly showed his driver's license, but did not allow the officer to write down the information from it, causing a scandal that ended up in the media. Several years after that, he's still speeding around, and it seems like he has no intention of stopping. This is ridiculous. Okay? I don't lecture you. I don't lecture you. I know I'm speeding. Oh, man, what's it going to take for you to stop speeding? You said, rob me an effing ticket. That's not what you That's said. your response. Hostile. Because I'm hostile. Hostile, okay. Am I wrong? Okay. No, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. You call it hostile, I call it frustrated. Well, this is the deal. I get it. I get it, man. I do. Apparently you don't. Because you won't stop. Bryce, let me tell you something. If you're so worried about why aren't you stopping all these other cars that are hauling up and down the road? You know what? This is by my 10th traffic stop today. Okay. I'm not the only person out there that speeds. You're right. You're not. I'm not the only one. But I haven't I'm stopped. I'm not the only one. But I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. I'm not the only one. Uh, the, same time, the same person three times in the last three months either. I haven't. Well, I haven't stopped anybody more than I've stopped you. Well, you know what? I admit it to you. Your under sheriff and your deputies also. Yeah. Every time I turn around, you guys are constantly speeding, and you're the worst. I don't think I'm the worst. You are. I'm the, I don't think I'm the worst, Bryce. I don't think I'm the worst. I'll, I'll argue with you on that. Okay. Because I know I see lots of marked units hauling ass everywhere. Marked units? Yeah, probably. They yeah. do. Yeah. I'm in the non marked unit. This is my personal unit. This is my unit. Okay? So, my unit and those marked units, there's no difference. Is it? No. There's not. Because they're all units. You came to me in a hostile manner. Okay, you call it hostile. I'm telling you. You came up to me. What's it going to take? Because, apparent, no because right apparent, I told you I wasn't going to write you. You can write me. I'm not asking for any favor. But I'm... But I'm no, telling you, I, I see it as a sign of disrespect at this point. Well, I don't because think you it's obviously disrespect. are not going to slow down. Bryce, let me tell you. All right, so I'm sign done. Of disrespect. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm not disrespecting anybody. Else. But you just, you just ignore the fact that you can just do whatever I'm you want, drive as fast as you want to do, because you're the sheriff no, and you can not. do what you want. You can say whatever you want to, Bryce. Well, that's your attitude. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is. All right. Thanks. Yes, you heard him right. The sheriff believes that a private car is allowed to speed just like a marked vehicle with flashing lights as long as there's a police officer behind the wheel. And so, Sheriff Bryant got off without a ticket and continued speeding through his county with a child in the passenger seat.